catch a three-one kill. I'm just going to hold you there momentarily. You're blocked getting to your gate. It's a carefully choreographed dance in the sky and on a 21 square kilometer dance floor. All of the arrivals and departures are directed from a perch with a spectacular 360 degree view of the city overlooking runway 1634. We got to watch the action in the control tower during a so-called quiet time. In 2009, Canada's fourth busiest airport shuttled over 12 million passengers. This year, Transport Canada estimates nearly 250,000 aircraft will take off or land in Calgary. By 2015, that number could increase by more than 25 percent. During the morning or evening rush hours, there can be a dozen or more planes waiting on the ground to take off or circling in the sky to land. So the problem is, yeah, you know, after they land, we try to get them in the, the first taxiway here. So they've got to stop and then we let this one go. When, when this one stops here, then you have to stop landing another one from getting in. So it just becomes a bottleneck. Bob Miller says it's because Calgary's two longest runways cross each other, and that can cause delays. We've heard a lot lately about next year's closure of Barlow Trail and a controversial tunnel to the airport, but not as much about the 4,267-meter-long runway, the longest ever to be constructed in Canada, that will replace Barlow. If you had your two runways parallel, it's a totally different system. How would that make life easier for you? Oh. You arrive everything on this runway, depart everything off this runway. No delays, no bottlenecks. Sitting in the control tower watching a plane land and take off just about every minute, it's easy to see why another runway is wanted. Rick Donkers, CalgaryHerald.com.